What is going on YouTube? It's Eric to be back with a brand new performance review. As you can tell from the title today, we're going to be taking a look at those Adidas basketball Trey Young ones here in just a few minutes. Let you guys know how they perform for me on court. We do have an unboxing already here on the channel um, where we did unbox them, take a look at them, go over an initial review on the sneaker. So you can definitely check that video out if you haven't already and check out any of my other performance review videos on basketball sneakers that I do have here on the channel. Used to edit a lot of unboxings and things like that. I've kind of transformed the channel just to be mostly about performance basketball sneakers now. Um, and do actual just performance reviews. I do a few unboxings and things like that, but as, I, but as I said, mostly the channel is strictly towards performance basketball reviews. So if that interests you at all, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button as well. Thanks again guys for tuning in today. Let's go ahead and check out the Trey Young Ones. First up, let's talk about the traction. Just a little bit on the Trey Young ones. You guys know if you've checked out any of my reviews before or any of my written performance reviews, basically the most important thing to me or the thing that I probably care about most for any basketball sneaker is the actual traction setup. I do love a very, very strong traction pattern or setup to be on a basketball sneaker. That's what is just probably the most important aspect to me overall besides maybe lockdown. But as I said, traction is definitely number one. On the Trey Young one, I had super high expectations for this shoe, not only from a traction standpoint, but just overall in general. Obviously, we'll get to more of the aspects here in a minute, but from a traction standpoint, I would say they were kind of hit and miss for me when I first got these straight out of the box, played in them. It was a nice court, a uh, very clean court the first time out, and they worked very well. I had no issues with them. I actually really liked the shoe um, and just enjoyed it overall from a traction standpoint. As I continued playing in these, played on uh, several different gyms and different courts and things like that, they seemed to get a little worse over time, um, and especially if the court was dirty or dusty, it was very, very hard to get any good traction whatsoever. It just didn't grip the floor at all. Um, I even use this expression in my written review, but you've heard people say before, um, I'm sure I feel like I'm on skates or I feel like I'm playing on skates right now. And that's exactly how these felt if the court was dusty whatsoever. Um, and you can also see here, the grooves are kind of like deep. Um, they're not like just little light edges or grooves as you can tell. So it is a little bit of a deep traction pattern. So even with wiping and things like that, it's still really, really hard and I just really didn't have that great of success whatsoever if the court was dusty now or, or dirty. As I said before, if the court was clean or a nice court, um, they performed just fine for me laterally, vertically. But as I said, if you are used to playing on dusty, dirty courts, I don't know that this shoe is going to work out that great for you. But if you've got a decent floor, um, great setup, good places to play and things like that, you're probably going to really like these from a traction standpoint and not going to have a whole lot of issues out of them if you are playing on a nice court. Next up, let's talk about the look or the aesthetics of the shoe just a little bit. I think the shoe overall is a very, very good looking sneaker. That's probably overall one of my favorite parts of the actual shoe is I just think that the shoe looks really, really good in my opinion. I think that it's a very good start for the Trey Young line or overall just a first signature sneaker if you want to say to start or debut the line. I just really, really like how the sneaker looks. I like the eyelets, the designs that they went with um, on the shoe. And you can obviously switch these out to different colors for maybe different collabs, um, different uh, colorways, obviously, and things like that to kind of go with the shoe. So this is like the icy colorway and they went with the white and the red. It just, it, everything kind of links together or goes perfectly, I feel like, with the aesthetics of the shoe or what they were trying to do. You can even see here on the toe box area, it just almost seems like ice or like polar bear type ordeal. I just gives you those vibes. So as I said, aesthetics of the shoe, I think is really, really good. Lots of the colorways that I've seen so far, I really like. There hasn't really been any colorway that has released or that, for example, um, that is to do to release that I haven't really liked thus far. Um, that So So Def colorway that came out for Jermaine Dupri and Atlanta. I think that's a really cool uh, colorway and a really cool thing for Atlanta as well. But overall, as I said, I think it's a really good looking shoe. No issues for me from an aesthetic standpoint. And I don't think that you're gonna be disappointed with how these look in hand or anything like that uh, at all either. Next up, we'll talk about the fit just a little bit. So for me, normally, almost every single Adidas sneaker, I need to size down in Yeezys. Sometimes I'll need to size up or go just with my real true size 11 and a half. But with just about any performance basketball sneaker with Adidas, I do go half a size down, and that's been that way for as long as I can remember. So I did go down half a size to an 11. They are still a little bit long, but where the shoe is kind of like a one-piece upper booty construction, um, there's really, it's got a tight fit to it. So the 11, 
seven, you know, going down half a size actually ended up working out pretty well for me overall on court. Um, I will say this, I do think my recommendation is going to be to go down half a size regardless. But if you do, or if you are a wide footer or you have a wide foot, I would honestly recommend trying these on. And the reason for that is, is as I said, you've got this one piece upper construction that it's going to be a very tight fit already. Your laces and things like that don't really do a whole lot in general. You're pretty much already locked in or tight tied into the shoe from your actual fit standpoint. So you do want to make sure you get a correct fit because if the shoe is too big, it's definitely not going to perform very well for you on the court because you are going to be moving around um, a lot inside the shoe and things like that. So from a fit standpoint, as I said, it is going to be a pretty snug fit to the shoe, but overall you do want to get your correct size number one. And number two, as I said, you're probably more than likely at least going to want to go down half a size. I just feel like the overall going true to size, the sneaker is going to fit just a little bit long in my personal opinion. So next up, we're going to talk about the lockdown. We're actually going to incorporate some of the fit that we just went over into the lockdown category. I know I've already said this, but I'm going to kind of reiterate it. Getting your perfect size or your correct size in the sneaker is going to be huge or play a vital role in the actual lockdown of the shoe. In my personal opinion, as I said, if I would have got my uh, normal true to size 11 and a half, they would have been too big or too long and the lockdown would have been horrible. Um, and the heel area would have been sliding up and down and uh, back and forth. So going down half a size, getting my correct size was vital or played a key role, as I said, in getting such a good lockdown in the shoe or a good lockdown review um, from me in the shoe. I've rated it a perfect score in the lockdown category. And as I said, most of that had to do with being able to get the correct sizing. Um, in the heel area, um, the forefoot area, everything felt great to me. We went over this in the fit as well, but it is a pretty snug fitting shoe, which is fine for me playing basketball. I've always liked my shoes to be a little bit more snug performance wise anyways. Um, and overall, there's, there's no real complaints from me performance wise in the lockdown category. One thing I will tell you, you guys know, or I've went over this in many reviews, whether it's written or video, I usually don't like super low top sneakers. And this is one that should give you an idea of how the lockdown did work very well for me overall because normally when a sneaker is this low cut in the ankle area or collar area and what I mean by that is I don't normally like when my ankle bone kind of lays over or is a taller than the cut of the ankle area of the shoe. That's just something I've never really preferred. I always like to have it a little bit taller. More of a mid is about as low as I used to go. I would never wear um, really low low top sneakers um, to play in and as I said I kind of went out on a limb. Here lately overall I've been playing in a lot more low tops but these were definitely almost on the I'm going to say what I would wear casually level than what I would ever probably play basketball wise and as I said I had no issues with them um, very very nice fit to the shoe very locked in feel and just no issues whatsoever from a lockdown uh, standpoint or category I never really felt myself at uh, risk of injury or feeling like I was going to roll my ankle over or anything like that and as I said that's a very big or crucial deal for me especially with this ankle or collar area being so low but as I said overall I don't think you're going to have too many um, instances where you don't like this shoe from a lockdown standpoint now if we're talking about straight up low top sneakers if you don't like playing in low top sneakers or you have maybe some of the same issues or things that I've went over with a low top sneaker. Um, it may be something that you do not like, you know, it's going to be the same as any other. But as I said, when I played in these, I just felt a little different in them. And once again, I felt very locked into the shoe and I just liked the overall fit, feel and lockdown that I had in the Trey Young ones. Let's go ahead and talk about the cushion on the Trae Young 1. So I will go ahead and say I had super high expectations for the cushion and they didn't really let me down, but the cushion was different than the expectations that I had for the sneaker. The shoe features light strike and boost, which I thought featuring both and that these were going to be a very cushioned, um, very, very bouncy type sneaker. And at the same time, they definitely were not. Um, the cushion was... More than minimal, but I'm not going to say there was a ton of cushion to the shoe. I definitely had way more court feel in the shoe than I definitely felt cushion. There's nothing wrong with that. As I said, that's what I more prefer. But my expectations for the shoe is that they were going to be way more bouncier than what they are. And as I said, um, it's not a disappointment because it's actually more of what I prefer in the first place. But if you're kind of like me and thinking that you're going to have a super, super cushioned or a very, very comfortable shoe from a cushion standpoint, 
standpoint, I wouldn't necessarily consider these to be in that category. If we're going to talk about Nike basketball or compare these, I would kind of put them kind of on like a Greek Freak or Giannis uh, signature shoe level from a cushion standpoint. Not quite as minimal as maybe a Kyrie, um, but Kyrie's have been more cushioned here over the past several years. But at the same time, they're definitely not like a LeBron model or anything like that. But overall, I like the cushion setup. I hope I'm not giving you the vibes of there's like zero cushion in the shoe whatsoever because there's definitely cushion. You're going to feel great in the shoe. It's a very comfortable fit in my opinion. As I said, going back to the fit, as long as you get the correct fit to the shoe, if not, you're going to be getting some blisters and things like that. But overall, I don't want you to think, as I said, that there's no cushion whatsoever because it is a very nice cushion setup. Great feel on court. You definitely do feel low to the ground with it being such a low top sneaker. And overall, you're going to get great court feel out of the shoe. For me, basically the way that I worded it or put it in my actual written review is, is that I pretty much got enough cushion, impact protection, um, and the feel that I'm looking for pretty much at any time to be on the actual basketball court. So it gave me a great mix of those things as well as giving me the great court feel or the amount of court feel that I'd like to have from a cushion standpoint in my basketball sneaker. Going over the materials just a little bit, I've kind of hinted at you guys on several different reviews that most of the time for basketball sneakers or performance basketball sneakers, if you want to say, I'm not too worried about the overall look or feel of the materials. I mean, you know, it does make a difference. Like if it's a more premium material, obviously it's going to be, makes the shoe very, very nice or a lot nicer to the look. But what I'm most worried about with materials is how they perform on court, how the uh, materials feel for me on the actual basketball court. Really had no issues with these on court from a feel standpoint or how they actually felt to me on court. Um, to me, overall, it's the exact same upper materials used on the Donovan Mitchell 2s. I have those over here. Played in those. Didn't mind the materials whatsoever. They uh, were very breathable. Um, no issues with my feet being super sweaty or anything like that. So overall, no real issues for, from me uh, from a material standpoint on the court. They're definitely not premium. Um, as I said, if you played in the Donovan Mitchell 2s or have seen those, it's pretty much the exact same materials um, overall. Um, on the upper from that from a material standpoint. The only thing that I did mention in my written review that maybe gave me a little bit of worry is, and, and I kind of said this but in my written review, but the eyelet area, um, I'm worried that these may rip over time, and that's just going to be a wear and tear type thing. I mean, if you play in these a ton um, and are rough on them, playing them every single day, two, three hours, whatever it may be, um, they could rip or you know tear on you over time. But I think that overall the materials are going to be very durable um, in, in a natural instance. And then right here, this felt area um, on this actual colorway, I've heard that some of the colorways have like a leather piece right here and things like that. But this colorway does feature, as I said, it feels a lot like felt. I'm not going to say that's exactly what it is, but that's what it sure feels like to me. I do feel like that with a lot, a lot of wear, maybe, you know, over time that this could rip as well or rip off the actual sneaker. But overall, nothing that I'm really too concerned with. Um, as I said, a lot of times when I test a basketball sneaker, I'll play in them enough to get my review out, several different um, sessions and things like that. Then after that, I kind of put them up to work casually. Um, if I, I may sell them, if I didn't enjoy the shoe, whatever it may be. But at the same time, I wear them to the gym what, to work out in um, or whatever. So it's not something that for me that I'm really too concerned with. I'm more giving you guys this opinion of mine for if you're going to be playing in them every day for a full season or whatever it may be that you could have some issues from a durability standpoint a little bit but i think overall it would be more of an outdoor thing i think that these will work out very very well indoors i think outdoors that they'll work out good for you as long as you can get the traction to hold up good outdoors um but i just feel like that if you get stepped on a lot it's not necessarily the materials may not hold up or still be on the shoe, but what I'm trying to say is, is that um, it may be that the shoe doesn't look as good overall, if that makes sense. You know, it's going to look very, very worn out. I feel like if you play in these a ton outdoors, but I didn't test these at all outdoors, so I could be completely wrong. It's just my initial opinion from sneakers that I've played in in the past outdoors. One thing I do think that'll be good is that the grooves... Um, where they're so deep will probably last you or be pretty good outdoors um, in general as well. But as I said, overall from a material standpoint, I think that you're not going to have really any issues other than maybe a few of the things over several periods or several long amounts of time of actually playing in the Trey Young ones. 
overall, the Trey Young ones are a really cool shoe to play basketball in. I'm going to start out by saying that I had super high expectations for this shoe. I think my expectations were a little high, to be honest, especially for a first signature shoe of a line, so to speak. I think they did a really good job on this shoe. It's just my expectations were a little bit higher because I do like Trey Young a whole lot as a basketball player, and I was just super stoked to be finally getting a signature shoe for him. Um, as I said, very fun shoe to play basketball in. I will say out of all the sneakers that I've been testing over the last two, three, four years, this is one that was very, very fun to actually test. I couldn't wait to get them in. It's just one of those shoes, like for me, for whatever reason, I can't sit here and pinpoint exactly what it is. Maybe it's how it looks. I don't know. But it was one of those shoes that I was just super excited to test out and play in on the basketball court. And it's one of those that if any little thing goes wrong, you're kind of like, Man, they're not as good as I thought they were going to be. But overall, as I said, still a really good solid basketball shoe. I think a lot of people are going to have a whole lot of fun in this shoe and really, really like them overall. As I said, my number one biggest downfall of this shoe is the traction setup on a dusty or dirty floor. I just couldn't get them to work out for me. It could have to do with this translucent outsole. Not really sure. Some of the pairs um, are going to have uh, or feature a solid rubber outsole. So maybe I can go back and test one of those pairs later on down the line. But overall, from a standpoint of the actual Trey Young ones, I really did have a lot of fun testing the shoe from a fit, materials, lockdown. Um, everything worked out very well for me, except for that one thing in the traction setup. And if you're able to get past that, I think you're going to have a very solid all-around basketball sneaker, and you're going to really enjoy the Trey Young ones. I really want to thank everyone for tuning in today and checking out this performance review on the Trey Young Ones. I uh, really appreciate everyone's support. Thank you guys for checking it out. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think overall of the Trey Young Ones. Have you tried out a pair yet? Let me know your thoughts or how the sneakers have worked out for you on the basketball court. Thanks again guys for tuning in today. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate everyone's support. And we'll be back very, very soon with either some more gear or some more sneakers. Peace.